Hey guys and welcome back to Nomi Factory. Last time we set up some package dough here to automate extended crafting table recipes. We also added several blast furnaces here at EV, HV and IV. And of course we built our second fission reactor here, which is still intact. No meltdowns yet, that's... <laughs> I did notice however that we were really really low on fuel. Our TBU pellets which goes into the reactor to fuel it was uh, reaching below 500 actually. So I just got done setting up these 92 EV thermal centrifuges which process thorium dust. This gives us thorium 232 and we craft this into our TBU fuel, fuel directly. So you guys remember these crafting arrays here that we set up a few episodes ago? We've been upgrading every now and then, whenever we need to. These setups in these squares here can allow us to parallelize crafts, meaning that we can craft more than one thing at a time. And for example, alloy smelters or lathes. Even with these eight machines though, things can still be a little bit slow. However, I think we might have a solution for that in this pack, and that comes in the form of the processing array. Greg Tech's best multi-block, for sure. <laughs> the only thing is to build the processing array, we need something called Scenarium, which is alloy smelted in IV from stabilized curium and stabilized plutonium. And both of these materials we can only get from nuclear craft fuel processing. So when the TBUs run through the reactor, we get depleted TBU. We can then centrifuge those for some other nuclear fuels, run those through a reactor, and eventually we make our way up to curium and plutonium. But this new reactor that we have is not capable of processing some of those higher tier materials. So yeah, we're gonna need a third reactor at least. <laughs> yes, I know. So I have made several optimizations to our tungsten between episodes and we're back up to 2300, which should be enough for our third reactor here. We need another 660 reactor cells. These are not too bad, honestly. 660 cryothium coolers. We're actually short steel, wow. And the last thing is the casing blocks, which is the bulk of the cost here. I think we're short around 640-ish. Yeah, and for this it's just some tungsten steel, which really shouldn't be too long to smelt now that we've reached the threshold on tungsten. So I guess to start us off today, let's make some space for these processing arrays. This was our old ore processing setup, we no longer need any of this. And in fact, we don't even really need any of these LV machines anymore. Maybe with the exception of the autoclave, I still use this from time to time. <laughs> that probably means we should get a new one at higher tier though, right? I think this pulsating polymer clay setup though, we're gonna leave, since it's not any less efficient than the one over there. It's just a bit slower, but it does supplement our EV pulsating polymer clay production. So this we might as well keep, and we can cut the line right around here, get rid of everything else in this, in this space. I'm thinking that we put the processing arrays in these squares here. And yes, arrays, plural. <laughs> There's gonna be many, many of these things. Alright, so unlike the second reactor that we built, this next one is only going to be passively cooled. Meaning that it's not going to add any extra drain on our cryothium consumption. The cryothium coolers that we're building for this reactor are fluid canned in cryothium. But this thing I think is what's known as cryolattice, which is basically just a checkerboard pattern of cryothium coolers and reactor cells. As high as you want to go, or as, as large as you want to make it, I think can work. We're going to go with 11 by 11 for this. But this design is definitely much easier to build, it's just this all the way up, basically. We just have to be careful not to miss a cell, it's really easy to misplace these things since they're kinda transparent. <laughs> you know, after just saying this was easy to build, look at what I've just done. <laughs> you guys spot it already? Oh, these two layers should be opposite. There should be a cooler here. <laughs> oh well, time to rip it all out. Okay, this is taking way too long with just this pickaxe here. Let's make a flux bore so that we can get 3x3, or I think it maybe even goes up to 9x9. Graft to the tool casing, and then just some easy steps up to the drill. Yeah, there's the basic one. I think we can take this all the way up to Signalum, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, we don't have Enderium yet for Resonant. Efficiency 4, not bad. Not bad at all. Oh, nice. Yeah, so this thing used pretty much all the tungsten we had, but it's built. I don't think I missed a reactor cell. If we look on the fishing controller here, we've got 11 by 11 by 11, 666 casings, negative 106,400 heat per tick, which is good. So now we have to work our way through the fuel tiers. So again, we start at TBU, which goes through the second reactor over there. That gives us depleted TBU. We're going to filter all of this into a centrifuge. We may end up having more of these things, but right now we've got one IV. 
So that's going to centrifuge down into Uranium-233, Neptunium-237, Neptunium-236, and Uranium-235. From the 237 and 236, we want to craft LEN-236. There's going to be a lot of numbers here, but just bear with me. <laughs> and in fact, the, the chart that you can see is made by Neve, one of the Omni and Nomi factory developers, I believe. It's showing the, basically the most efficient way to get down to the fuels that we need. So there's no point in reinventing the wheel. We're going to, go, we're going to, we're going to be following that thing. So we'll set up some crafters here. Actually, I think we maybe only need three of these things. And yeah, I've laid the drawers out in order here. So we want Neptunium-237, Neptunium-236. Both of those are going to be filtered in the first crafter. Actually, it'll have to be limited item filter, right? Insert brown, extract blue, and we have to extract from this drawer controller. So yeah, then the output of this crafter, the LEN-236, we just want to filter in this new reactor. So we can ask for it in this interface here and send this straight into the fission reactor port. Insert brown, extract blue. And we'll have to give this fuel a new drawer. So I'm thinking that we put the new fuels on this side, LEN-236, which should be sent to the fission reactor already, if we actually connect the drawer networks together. <laughs> yeah, storage bus is already on this thing. Yeah, now it's filling the reactor, all right. So we don't need to worry about any of the redstone controls for this, since this is an inherently stable reactor, and the purpose of this is just to burn through all of the fuel as quickly as possible. So we can just hard power this thing with a lever. I just wanted to make sure that the heat levels were stable enough here. So yeah, this gives us depleted LEN-236. We can store that as a new fuel type, or as a depleted fuel type. And this we can also filter into the centrifuge. Let's skip the queue a little bit so that we can get our new fuels. We get Neptunium-237, which we already had a drawer for. We get Americium-243, Americium-242, which is different. <laughs> you can go here. And we also get Plutonium-242. And then from here, we craft the next fuel. Americium-243 and 242. We'll craft together for our lowly enriched Americium-242. And then this we send into the reactor. And yeah, there is a backlog here of lowly enriched Neptunium. Let's maybe skip the queue just to make sure this is still stable enough, which it is, minus 43. So it's a little bit higher in the heat per tick, but we're still safe enough. So then again, the depleted fuel goes on new line. Depleted is filtered in the centrifuge. Lowly enriched Americium-242. From here, we get Curium-245, Curium-246, Curium-243, and also Curium-247. And then, unsurprisingly, we craft the middle two together again. This is going to make us LECM-243, the all the lowly enriched, basically. We don't want highly enriched here. Highly enriched fuels, I think, give more power, but they are also more dangerous to run. Anyways, new fuel type. Filter this into the reactor. Again, a little bit higher in the heat per tick, but that's okay. New depleted fuel drawer. Send into the centrifuge. And that's basically it. We get our last three nuclear fuels here. Berkelium-247, Berkelium-248, and Californium-249. That one also gives us some more Curium-246. Some of them give the last tier, which is why we're missing some drawers here. But yeah, that's that's really all there is to it. So yeah, as you can see here, we do occasionally get a few hundred thousand RF out of this thing. So I have hooked up some power connections just to grab the power that we, we're getting. We might as well use it, right, if we're producing it. In fact, we may need a few more reactor ports since it's only 500,000 odd RF per tick per connection with the conduits that we have anyway. All right, so now with the nuclear fuel processed, it does take a while for, for us to get enough of this high tier. However, let's try to make our first process in array. How's our tungsten steel? We're back up to 125. Uh, that should be enough for one, at least. <laughs> and we're going to slowly keep getting it trickling through throughout the episode. So to unlock these things, we do need Scenarium. And for Scenarium, we do need to pick up the quest, which I think is somewhere here in mid- Oh yeah, we've got all the fuels to pick up here. Oh yeah, all the quest pops. <laughs> should be another one as well. Uh-huh. Uh, two to go, looks like. LEU233, I don't think we make this even. Yeah, this is one that we don't make. I think this is an alternate way to make plutonium. LEU233 is not something that we currently send through a reactor in this system, but we should be able to run it regardless and get our quest. And same for plutonium, we need to run LEP239. All right, so we have quest unlocked here for Scenarium. We do need, however, the stabilized versions, which is not the same as the versions we're getting here. So there's one more step before we can get Scenarium. We have to fluid solidify these. And for a lot of these, we also need them in the Mote of Omnium and a few other crafts here and there, such as the Microverse missions for Naquada. So like most of the other things, if we do one, we might as well do them all. <laughs> and I think we'll do this at EV. So I've set out 10 fluid solidifiers and extractors. I've compiled the list of the things you want to fluid solidify, mostly again for the Mote of Omnium recipe. Although there is a few other things in here we have to do, such as solidified oxygen and nitrogen. We do need to be careful which nuclear fuel we pick. For example, Neptunium, we get 236 and 237. 
And if we check the chart again, we do technically get less Neptunium-236, but we use Neptunium-237 a lot more. So because of that, we're going to use 236. So basically for all of these, they're going to get a limited item filter on the extractor. That's going to melt into fluid form, so we get fluid Neptunium. Automatically send into the fluid solidifier, where we give it a ball mold, and we should get stabilized Neptunium. I've got downgrades on all the drawers, so we're only going to store one stack of each of these stabilized versions. Alright, I think I got all the filters set here, so we're now making stabilized uranium, stabilized plutonium, americium, americium plates, californium, berkelium, this one is empty, we'll get back to, and curium. So this is 9 fluid solidifiers actually, and we have 10 fluid extractors since we're extracting curium-247 and also curium-245. These we don't use in any of the next tier of nuclear fuels, so we can just extract all of this basically. And I think we'll put the drawer controller here. Storage bus on the side. Perfect, we even already have one crafted. This will get high priority. And yeah, these are going to build up for when we need them. The one that's missing here is thorium. Remember, we are making plenty of thorium dust here. We have 33,000, 32,000. Lots and lots of thorium dust. However, we do need to smelt it into ingots first before we can fluid extract. We can't fluid extract the dust, but we can just add a simple MV furnace here. That means we can add it to our wall of solidifiers here. Yeah, and there is stabilized thorium. So the reason we also had americium plates here, I mean, we're fluid extracting americium here anyway, so we may as well make the plates, and these are going to be used for Fusion Mark II, as well as the Fusion Mark III controller. So we're kind of just planning ahead a little bit, and the americium is used over there in fuel processing, so it's going to take a little away from that a little bit, but we're only buffering one stack in this drawer. But yeah, the main reason we've done this right now is to get curium and plutonium, which is here and here. We do need an alloy smelter IV tier. I did encode the recipe for this. Can we craft this? Oh yeah, easy. And I think Scenarium is definitely something that we want to passive since it's 100 seconds per piece. And this is also used in solar panels as well. So we need a fair amount of this. Actually, while that is crafting, maybe we should move these fluid extractors. We'll place it here instead. This was the one doing americium. It just means that we buffer less americium fluid. And we'll just round robin between the two fluid solidifiers doing the stabilized and the americium plates. Okay, so we got our alloy smelter crafted here. I've shuffled our compressor over a few blocks, and that way we can hook up to the same drawer controller as the crystal CPUs. So we have the interface on the side of the machine to supply plutonium and curium. We're gonna place a robot arm, and I want to try out these smart fillers. Apparently this thing can match recipes and machines, and we don't have to do supply exact. I'm not sure if this actually works or not. Ignore fluids. Yeah, we don't need fluids in this, right? And we want to select the alloy smelter. Oh, apparently it doesn't do the alloy smelter. All right then. <laughs> well, I guess we're going to have to go the old-fashioned way. Yeah, regular item filter, supply exact, 8 plutonium, 8 curium. Oh man, we're making scenario. <laughs> oh yeah. In fact, I think we want this one keep exact, right? Just to buffer a bit less. It's a slow recipe anyway. Oh no, this is exciting. This is another turning point here in the pack. We're about to be flying. <laughs> so long as we have tungsten steel, of course. I want to be here to see the first one. I'm waiting in anticipation of this. You know, I hope there's nothing else that's bottlenecking us from getting these processing arrays. I don't think so though, right? I think we've accounted for everything. The rest is just some IV machines and tier 6 circuits. Oh, there it is. Sunarium. Oh yeah, this is exciting. <laughs> is this the correct tier 6 circuits? Yeah, I think it is, right? The quantum processor arrays. Yeah, so can we maybe start off with like 6 of these to begin with? I mean, apart from the Sunarium cost, we're missing a few pieces of that. Oh man, this is 108 tier 5s. <laughs> 300 tier 4s. 88 Lumium as well, just for the controller blocks. That's kind of crazy, honestly.
Oh yes, I am already loving these things. <laughs> oh, processing arrays are actually the best multi block in the game. So let me show you what we got already here. We've got cutting machines. I added an assembly machine version and also some alloy smellers here. So basically this replaces our crafting arrays that we had over here. The processing array can allow you to insert up to 16 machines in the in access interface. And when you give it input, it will run the recipe as if you had the, the 16 machines in it. Right now we only have one. We can stack up to 16 and it will run the recipe as if it's doing 16 at once. There is also capability for fluid handling with these as well. So we can use it for things like coat and cable, which is why I filtered in styrene butadiene rubber in here and also regular rubber. Although the way this is set up is not very efficient. So I think we're going to change that in a second. But the fluid also comes in handy here for the cutting machine as it takes either water or lubricant to cut plates. So I took the lubricant that used to be buffered in our cutting machines. These are still at MV. In fact, we should maybe take this opportunity to increase their tier. And we're going to start with at least EV machines. We'll go up. Yeah, sure, why not? Let's go up to the full 16, assuming we can craft this. So yeah, the power you supply to these things does matter. It does depend on the machine tier that you're running. Since we want to run 16 EV machines, it means we need at least 4 amps of IV, which means 2 IV energy hatches or above. So we just have our main power backbone going across the middle, fed into CEFs to convert to GT energy, and then into 2 energy input hatches. As for the patterns on these things, we've got a storage crate just so that we can have surround more interfaces around the same input bus. This extra one I have is just for glowstone loped bulls since we want these to automatically be cut. So I've just given those their own input bus. And then the output bus is just connected to another interface here which just sends it back to your EE system. And that is the same for all of these things. Input is always on the left, output is always on the right. So we have another one crafted here. We're going to make this one for wire mills since wire mills are still only at MV tier here. So two energy inputs. Our controller front and center access interface can go, I think, anywhere. I like to put it below the machine controller though. We'll try to establish a standard with these so that they're all set up in more or less the same way so that we can easily debug them if things go wrong. Input on the left, output bus on the right, interface for the output. And we also want to name our interface as well. So it's going to be wire mill PA and then storage crate and the interface. Super, super easy to set up as long as you have the materials, of course. <laughs> Yeah, this should form the multi-block. Perfect. And we can put our wire mills inside. Although there's not much point in putting the MV ones in. Let's request 16 EVs. Assuming we can. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, it's all it's always so much annealed copper. In fact, I had to I had to actually add a second blast furnace for annealed copper. We had a space here where tungsten used to be. So this is now EV doing annealed copper. Looks like the cutting machines are finished. We should just be able to swap out the machines themselves. Yeah, and now this will do 16 recipes at once at EV speeds. So there is also this distinct bosses mode. So we're making good use of that over here, actually, where we cut cable, since we need different versions of the integrated circuit and these can't be automated. So basically anything you put into this input bus will respect circuit 24. And we have a separate, I think circuit 28 in the back here. Yeah. So the wires put in here will be coated 16 at a time and the ones in the front will be 1x. That's the wire mills just finished crafting. This also means that we can yoink all the recipes out of this one, since we don't want it to use this to craft anymore. That was probably a bad idea. I need those expansion cards. <laughs> Let me pick them up. There we go. Yeah, and all of these patterns will go in this interface here. Yeah, so I think these three are fine, but the assembler still needs some work here with the automations. I also have this one doing polyethylene, and that is also using a separate fluid input bus for that. To make the cable coating a little bit easier, I think we're going to switch away from regular rubber. And we are instead just going to use one fluid to coat all of the cable, rather than trying to mess with two of them. So if I'm not wrong, we can use silicon rubber for more or less every single cable. I think maybe besides one. If I was to guess, it's platinum, but I'm not 100% sure on that. No, platinum can be silicon rubber or styrene butadiene rubber. I guess we'll soon find out if a craft fails, but yeah. <laughs> so if we use silicon rubber, it's actually a bit cheaper as well, since it uses less fluid to coat the same amount of cable. This process is going to start with a fluid interface to supply methane and also chlorine. Pump for insert. We need circuit configuration 3 for this, and this should give us chloromethane. Oh, and hydrochloric acid. Ah, oh, I didn't account for that, okay. Chloromethane we want to send to the next chemical reactor over here. And the hydrochloric acid we will store it and trash excess. We can just use some fluid conduit on the side for that. Yeah, so that takes care of the fluid. After we have chloromethane, we have to mix this with silicon. So we can have a regular interface here to supply silicon dust. Conveyor to pull that into the machine on import mode. This gives us dimethylchlorosilane. This we can mix in water and we get polydimethylsiloxane dust. That's a very fun word to say, by the way. <laughs> fluid auto output. 
And we can grab an aqueous accumulator for this, actually. We'll put that underneath. Oh, this is diluted hydrochloric acid. Well, in that case, we're going to need a distillery for that. It has to be at least EV. I don't fancy messing with transformers or anything, so we'll just build the EV machine. Yeah, so the distillery takes care of the hydrochloric acid. That's going to turn it into regular hydrochloric acid, stored and trashed. And then we just need one more chemical reactor to turn the polydimethyl siloxane dust item auto output for this. One more interface. And we just have to supply this with sulfur dust. We should have lots and lots of. Plug it in. Conveyor for import. Oh, that's right. We need the robot arm on this for supply exact. Oh, and you know what? We've actually run out of zinc foil. I batch crafted this back in LV and haven't made any since. So <laughs> that just kind of shows you how long it lasts. But we do need to fix this problem. And we really don't use the cluster mill recipes too often, so let's just add another one here, HV. That way it just allows us to put a pattern inside. Cluster mill HV. Easy. <laughs> and the recipe for zinc foil. Aha, that means we can fix the machine. We're making silicon rubber here. We've got a fluid storage bus on this. I think honestly this is slightly more renewable than styrene butadiene rubber is. So we're going to remove styrene butadiene from this and just coat everything in silicon rubber. Yeah, same with rubber here. We're going to get rid of these. And everything is going to get silicon rubber. Alright, so we have definitely got some work to do with these PAs. However, I think that's something that we're going to do on livestream. I would love to see you there if you're interested in checking that out. There'll be a schedule here on the, on the channel. But just to finish us off today, I think we're going to start to look at this assembly line. I don't think it's something that we can build today, but let's at least address some of the bottlenecks and things we're missing for it. So we'll start off by encoding all the recipes. Okay, after some recipe encoding, I think I got everything. Check this out. We can actually, <laughs> we can actually just straight up request this assembly line. I mean, it is the, only the controller and we need a multi-block structure. The 11 assembler machine casings is probably the worst of it since we have to use the inefficient circuit recipe for now. How many was it? 11? Oh, we can request this one as well. Okay, let's do this. Let's do this. 24 great machine casings. We can get this as well. <laughs> this is pretty cheap, all things considered. And the other expensive part of the assembly line casing, we need 12. We're just missing annealed copper. Wow. Yeah, it's definitely not as bad as GTNH is. That, that I'll say for sure. Oh yeah, it's just all the circuit crafting that's the bottleneck here. We're always waiting on circuits. Yeah, that definitely deserves to go in the PA. Oh man, we did it. <laughs> we got an assembly line. Wow. I definitely did not expect to get this thing today. I'm also not sure if this is where it's going to live. Let me know if you have any other suggestions on placement for this thing. But yeah, with that, I think this is also a good point to wrap up this episode. We got our nuclear fuel processing finished off. These EV thermal centrifuges were probably a bit overkill considering how little fuel we're actually using out of this thing now. I mean, some of these things aren't even running. Their buffers are actually full. But yeah, I'm just so happy we got our processing arrays, finally. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that is going to do us for today. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you all soon for some more Nomi Factory.